All right, we've got the Master of Q, Season 2 winner on tonight. Let's go. Good evening! What up, Gooder Gang? You know what time it is. It is 8 o'clock on Wednesday, and you know where to be. That is right here, watching the very best fake internet barbecue show on the planet. That's right, you're watching the So Smoking Gooder Show. I'm your host, Rob Roach, and I'm coming to you from the Bullhorn headquarters in Cyprus, Texas. Damn glad you're finding us, whether you're checking us out on Facebook, some of you, as a lot of you are, some of you guys, we got a lot of people in on the YouTubes, appreciate you guys, and still, maybe one guy, maybe one on Twitch, fist bump to that guy, we're going we're gonna to grow that as well, we're definitely going to grow that, but uh, yeah, so thanks, I better bring this microphone up, there we go, rookie, rookie mistake, no, but uh, thanks for tuning in guys, I really appreciate it. We are going to be Han Solo once again. Case Han has a prior commitment. He is not able to make it, but that's okay. That is okay. Uh, we've got a person that I've been wanting to talk to and uh, reached out to her, and she said, yes, let's do it. And this was about three weeks ago, and we finally got her on. This We're talking about Miss Erica Blair of Blue Smoke Blair Barbecue. I don't know if that's the end of the tagline. I'll ask her in a moment. But yes, she is the season two winner. Winner of the Master of Q, the Net Food Network's uh, Barbecue Brawls Master of Q winner. So I'm excited to have her on in just a moment. So guys, yes, 
Thank you again. This, this show doesn't cost you a darn thing to watch, but uh, if you could do me a favor, follow, hit like, tell a friend. Uh, what's the other one? Ring the bell. Yes, but if uh, you uh, want to, if you really want to help out, if you're going to be a gooder, hashtag gooder gang member, share, please. Share. Uh, let me get some shout outs. Johnny Mags was first in. Daddy Dutch is slipping. That's two weeks in a row. Daddy Dutch was not first, but he was second. Daddy Dutch, how are you? Uh, I see Wes Reed's in the house. Bill Purvis. Chicken fried barbecue, for those that do not know. Uh, Jeff, Michael Sistruck, hello. Judge Webb, Kevin Caldwell, Salt and Pepper, and Fire. Yeah, that it is. All right, guys, I think I'm caught up. Tony Tanache. Terrible, terrible. You can't. You know, I almost called you, Tony. But uh, see, comments like that. Maybe don't get a phone call. No, but uh, no, I case checked in a little late, so I didn't have time to uh, scramble and get a co-host. That's fine. That's okay. All right. Uh, last week, we had Greg Rempe on the show. Shout out to Greg Rempe. He's the host of the Barbecue Central show. Really enjoyed that conversation with Greg, getting to know him a little more than what I thought I knew from him from his show. Again, he was is the OG live show and barbecue podcaster of this format. So if you guys do like that kind of format, you can check him out on his show. He goes on Tuesdays at 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock Central um, from Ohio. Yes, two weeks in a row, people, we're having a guest from the great state of Ohio. And do they barbecue over there? I don't know. We'll, we'll talk to, uh, we, we got a little bit about it from Greg. Uh, but we'll talk to Erica as well about what's going on in the barbecue scene in Ohio because it's two guests in a row, people. That's crazy. From the state of Ohio. All right. Let me take a sip here. Normally, cases here, I can uh, have sips and do that. But now I gotta, I gotta go solo again. Han Solo. Yes. So last week, as you guys know, I was in Cyprus, right here in my backyard, at the Taffer, at the Texas Association of First Responders Wild Game Charity Cookoff. It was a great time. I did bring out the uh, hashtag Club Bullhorn was alive and well. I haven't done that in a while, but I did. Set up a nice little party. I was hanging out with Fong, Danny, Michelle Castillo. Uh, who else was there? Sergio. We had a uh, a nice camp. I know I'm missing somebody. I know I'm missing somebody. But regardless, the other person I guess I'm missing is Shell Leach. Uh, she has been uh, tagging along with me for the last few years. And she competed in her maybe her second contest. We were cooking side by side. She used my old sniper, my pit maker sniper, and uh, she did everything, man. She kicked it. She uh, did all the rubs. I mean, she did everything. I couldn't touch her food, and I made sure not to do that. But, you know, we were bouncing ideas. She was bouncing ideas off of me, and uh, she held a hell of a cook. So congratulations to Shell Leach from Smoke Like a Girl. She got three walks out of four, ladies and gentlemen, and finished seventh overall out of 74 teams, beat me, her mentor, she beat me, uh, but that's fine, I was really proud of her, and I was happy, happy to help her out, and uh, you, I'm sure you guys will see her on the uh, competition trail, yes, I know, you still never, what, I don't even know what you're talking about there, Tony, I don't even know what you are talking about, all right, and last thing, order of business before I get to the guest, of the evening and that was did y'all notice the new intro from eddie morales from the pit father barbecue let's check it i'm eddie morales pit father barbecue you're watching the so smoking gooder show that is three in a row people three last uh, couple weeks ago we had chris davis cross rifles barbecue last week aaron leslie from texas oil dust they did some really cool intros, and this week is Eddie Morales from the Pit Father Barbecue, who is just killing it, by the way. You will hear his name a little later in the show when we do the bulk printing wraps and graphics wrap-up recap. But yeah, if you guys want to submit a quick, short video saying who you are, put your own spin on it, say you're watching the So Smoking Getter Show, I'd love it. I'd love it. I've got a small library. I want to grow that, so... Let's, maybe I can get Erica to make one. Hmm. Maybe I can get Erica, the uh, Food Network star, to make one for me. That would be great. All right. There we go. That is the last order of business. 
No, I'm sorry, I got one more. One more. Quick little sponsor spot. And then we'll get to the lady of the hour. Shout out to our great sponsors. Rec Tech. Cosmos Q Products. Texas Pepper Jelly. Briscoe Ranch Cookoff at the Crossroads. LC Barbecue, Rick's RV Rental and Repair, Eureka Heights Brew Company, Chicken Fried Barbecue Grinds, Jay Harding and Company, Texas Oil Dust, Bull Printing, Wraps and Graphics, and the Barbecue Store in Hempstead. Thank you for supporting the So Smoking Gooder Show. Absolutely. Thank you, sponsors. We could not do this little fake internet barbecue show without you. So thank you so much, uh, guys. If you want to get on this sponsor reel at the end of June. So coming up here in a couple months is uh, that contract expires and we'll start new sponsorship. So uh, starting July 1st through June 30th. So that is coming up. If you guys want to get in and become a sponsor of the show, please hit me up at Rob at BullhornBBQ.com. We can get that arranged. All right. Enough of me. Let's get to the uh, person that y'all all want to talk to. I do, anyway. Let's get, uh, let me put her banner up. There we go. There we go. Let's bring her on right now. Miss Erica Blair from Blue Smoke Blair. I added barbecue. Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. There you go. All right. Blue Smoke Blair barbecue. How are you? And where, how are things going? And uh, real quick, how's the weather up there? Because last week, my, my, the guy from Ohio was telling me it was snowing in uh, yeah. late Late April. Yeah, it snowed and then it went up to 92 degrees and now we're back down to I think like 44. So, you know, you can wear Crazy. a and a t-shirt and some shorts. <laughs> you don't know, don't know how to dress from one day to another over there. Well, now in, in Texas, it's just getting hot. It's, uh, it's, it's the worst part right now. And we're about oh, to enter it. That's awesome. We're about to enter it. Yeah, I was doing a contest last weekend, and the heat started coming. I was like, yeah, okay. It's time time to uh, put it up for a little while. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right, so uh, Erica, so I don't know what you if you know about this fine show you're on right now. This is uh, mainly competition barbecue cooks from all over the country, but... Especially, we have a stronghold here in Texas, as I'm in Texas, so uh, we have a lot of comp cooks that watch this show, but not all, not everybody's a comp cook that watches this show. But uh, please introduce yourself. Tell us a little about yourself and uh, where you're at. I know we just said Ohio, but uh, introduce yourself, please. <laughs> well, I definitely can't beat Texas ever. But what? <laughs> my name is Eric Blair. I am the owner of Blue Smoke Blair's Barbecue Competition Team. And uh, that's my brand, my barbecue sauce, and my rubs. And I'm from Yellow Springs, Ohio. So that's why we're here. My parents are retired Air Force, and my husband is retired Navy. But now he is a pilot down in Houston. So what? Really, yeah, so really excited about that. We're looking at houses down there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very nice. That's exciting. <laughs> So you, uh, we'll get to it. But you were just here in Houston. Uh, we all, you were doing some work there. But what, what do you think of uh, of H Town? I'm absolutely obsessed. There's, I thought there would be no place that would beat New Orleans or Dallas. But then when I went to Houston, I was like, this is home, and this is, this is where I should be. So now I'm trying to like work my way down there so I can be there permanently. Well, if you are going to become a Houstonian, you have to. Uh, just you gotta hate Dallas. That's what we do here. You know, you just can't. Anything north of Bucky's and Centerville is Dallas area, and you know, whatever. No, I'm sure. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sure we got people from that area. I'm a, can't be a so smoking gooder show without Renee Gonzalez saying hashtag blow and smoke AP rub. Thank you for watching, Renee. I appreciate that. Uh, there's a. <laughs> I don't. This, I thought this was a question, but it's not. It's just, Tony, I love Tony already. <laughs> you, yeah. I thought I was gonna say you know Tony. Oh my gosh. I love Tony. I gotta follow Tony. We call him Top Fan Tony. He's normally telling me how much our show sucks, but 
He's also one. He's also a fill-in co-host whenever we had him. <laughs> he's from Canada. I think he's living in Atlanta right now. But uh, yeah, he said, "What's the best thing to do in Ohio?" He says, "Leave." I mean, come on, don't blow smoke. <laughs> don't throw that smoke up there. So, <clears throat> okay. So I've been billing it. You are the uh, Food Network's Barbecue Brawls Master of Q Season Two winner. I have some questions. We're not just going to talk about this, but I am, and I mentioned earlier, you're not the first guest on the show that we've had. Can you guess who the first guest was? Was it from my season? Yes. Was it Ara? It was not Ara. You get two more guesses. Um, was it someone on my team? Um, y'all changed teams so much. I can't answer that uh, <laughs> knowing. But uh, she's, oh, I just gave you a clue. She is not from Texas. Is it Lou Holter? Nope. Oh, my goodness. One more, one more. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, crap. Oh, uh, let's see. Was it Megan? Burnt Finger Megan. Yes, it was Megan Day from Burnt Finger Barbecue. She was a great, great guest. So we talked a little about the, uh, the backstory behind the scenes type of stuff that goes on with that but uh, let's let's back up a little bit how how talk about your barbecue journey how did that start you know you know what's you know because i know a little bit about it but uh, uh no one here does i would imagine but i would love for you to share with that with our guests yeah so i am probably the most like untraditional barbecue person ever i started out as a criminal defense attorney in miami florida and then I got into wine and I became a sommelier out in California. Oh, what? And then, <laughs> during that time, I started working at a restaurant. I started working at the Marriott and I started going in the kitchen and everything, learning like what the chefs were doing. And from there, I had my son and I was homebound. So for some reason, my dad and I, we would talk like every single day because, you know, I was trapped in the house with a baby and my dad was going through his bucket list and he said, finally, we had a bunch of crazy stuff. But then he said he wanted to open up a barbecue restaurant or a food truck. So I was like, yeah, that's something we can do. Like, let's do this, dad. This is going to be great. And um, then we both realized like neither one of us knew how to barbecue for like the masses. So I was like, okay, we got to figure that part out first. And backyard, like, backyard warriors at this point, right? Yeah. And so, and like, I mean, I had never used anything but a gas grill and I'd almost like blown myself up a thousand times with a propane tank. So I was not confident at all. <laughs> and so I started watching the barbecue shows on TV and that's when I found out about competition barbecue. And I was like, Ooh, I was like, I'm a competitive person. I like this. Let me do that. So I got on like all the forums. I got on Instagram, started talking to other pit masters. What, what year is this at the, what this, this point? Is, this is the, near the end of 2018. Okay. Yeah. And so then um, I Googled the people that I was watching on the show and I found Harry, Sue and Myra Mixon that they had schools, barbecue schools. And I was like, sign me up. I'm going. I don't know how I'm going, but I'm going. So I remember I got into Harry's first and he was in Diamond Bar, California. So I got up at 4 a.m., drove all the way up there and I was just like, okay, like we're gonna do this. And I thought like I'd be able to prep myself or whatever. And then the next thing I know, I'm like walking into his house and I'm just like, the intimidation <laughs> level was like insane. And so I'm just like, just be quiet, don't talk. Like don't let anybody know that you don't know anything. Just like hang in the background. And the next thing I know, around the corner, and there's Harry Sue. And he was just like the most welcoming, kindest person ever. And I, I think I was the only female in the class. So I was just like, uh oh, just like, you know, be cool and, you know, <laughs> like hold your ground, like look tough. And <laughs> when I got in there, everybody was so nice and everybody was helping each other and talking. And it wasn't any of this, like, even though they were all competition cooks. Like nobody was trying to act like they were better than anybody. And I was like, whoa, this is different. This is new. And so then at that point, you know, we went through the whole class and I learned so much and I was taking down a million notes. And then I went and I signed up for like four barbecue competitions. I didn't even have a girl yet. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Jump right in. Yeah. Head, like somebody, head first. Somebody on one of the forums said, that barbecue competitions fill up fast. So just put your name on there so that you can get in. So I was like, okay, I'll just sign up for four of them. 
Luckily, I never went to any of those. <laughs> I probably would not be in barbecue today. Um, but I stayed home and I started barbecuing and practicing and learning. And then I went to Myron's class. I drove all the way out to the middle of Georgia. Wow. <laughs> and it was freezing. And so I went to his class and that was a three day class. And he really lets you get hands on as well. So I really got in there because I was like, at this point, I knew that I was going to start competing for real. And um, he taught me so much and everybody there, you know, we were just sharing and we were learning, did the first full hog with him. And I was just like, okay. And then at that point, Myron asked if I was doing Memphis in May. And I had never even heard of it, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I'm doing Memphis in May. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just one of the majors out there, right? There's that's four of them. I was like, okay. I say five. There's four of them. That's one of them. <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah, first sure, one, not? first contest, let's go to Memphis let's in go. May. Let's, let's go for broke. If we're doing this, we're doing this. And so after that, then, you know, I signed up right there and sent out my application. But I think it was like a lottery system because I was trying to be in the amateur division. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. And then, of course, the world shut down <laughs> shortly oh, after okay. that. Yes, right. So I just, I was home at this point, and I just barbecued every day. And I was on Instagram in the barbecue chat groups and just really asking a million questions, talking to other, you know, pit masters that were in there. And then I started talking to competition pit masters and just asking them probably like the most embarrassing basic questions. But you know what? They took the time to answer them. And it made me it made me a better barbecuer. And That's... so after that, you know, it was time I signed up for my first solo competition prior to Memphis in May because I still hadn't gotten accepted yet. And so I loaded up a bunch of grills. I rented a truck and I drove down to Hazard, Kentucky by myself. Wow. <laughs> and I drove into my first competition. And I pulled up and everybody was just kind of looking at me like I had six heads. They were just like, what are you doing? I have a, I have a couple questions. What, what what sanctioning body was that? This was KCBS. KCBS. Yeah. And what did you haul in your truck? Um, I had three Webers. The, I had like 122 and 218s. And then I had like all my accessories. I went online and found like a, if you're going to a competition, what you should bring. So I was way <laughs> overpacked. <laughs> you were lo you were loaded down with everything. I I really I mean I looked like people were probably like oh this girl just like her boyfriend dumped her and now she's <laughs> moving all her stuff like. <laughs> so how did it go? So yeah, so I got there and immediately like they first they asked me they were like are you a judge are you competing like are you here with a team and I was like yeah I'm here by myself and I'm competing. And so then the next thing I know, like the guy went away and he's like, we're going to put you right up front so we can keep an eye on you. <laughs> of course, like they didn't let me near any of the beautiful RVs or the, the, the big rigs and stuff. They're like, no, girl. Um, but so then the next thing I know, I'm like offloading my truck and just like six guys came over and they just started helping me. And they were like, where's your team? And I was like, you're looking at it. <laughs> I'm like, it. It's me. And they were just like, no, no, that's not that's not what we do. <laughs> They're like, you need somebody who's going to run your boxes for you because you need to be prepping them and turning them in and stuff like that. They're like, we'll help you. Just tell us and we'll help you. And I was just, I was so blown away by that, by that that's, kindness. That's one thing I am so proud of the barbecue community all over the country. You're going to find, uh, except Tony, you know, but uh, most everybody <laughs> out there, <laughs> most everybody out there is helpful they are they are you know they'll, they'll they'll give you whatever you don't need and they'll you know i'm sure they, they probably ran your boxes for you at this point but I yeah i did it myself because okay, i was good. like no i need to do the full experience love it but but they came over they came over and like you know i had a little coleman lantern and i was like preparing my chicken by lantern <laughs> and you know, I had foil everywhere, and they were like, "You know, you can prep that at home." You, don't you went like it. caveman style uh, at a contest. You, that's, but that's great though. You can take from that experience for certain. Uh, Bill yeah. Purvis, Bill Purvis says, uh, "I remember seeing her competition post oh, on no. Insta." And Tony's kind. Of, that's the barbecue love. Yeah, see, Tony. See, t even Tony has a, a kind, a soft heart in top fan, in top fan Tony. So I guess you were hooked at that point, huh? Yeah, and you know, they were telling me they were like just don't worry about like placing or anything like that. Just try not to get disqualified and turn all your stuff in. And you know, if you do that, you do well. So, I turned everything in 
and then it was time for like the award ceremony and i got the piece of paper and it was like filled to the broom with like yellow tickets <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> the old yellow tickets i was like oh, what are these I was like, but i didn't get one for ribs Where, where's the one for ribs and so this one guy he's like that's the yellow ticket of doom you don't want those <laughs> you don't you don't want the yellows <laughs> so <laughs> was there a placing by chance in this? Oh yeah, I was holding up the bottom of every page. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what is that? It started from the bottom. There we go. And now yeah. look, now look at you. Yeah, I was like, at least I finished. You know, I'm yes. so proud of myself that I finished and I did it all by myself. And after that, I was hooked. And from there, I just I kept going. And then I kept posting stuff on Instagram and talking to people and just really trying to get better, trying to learn how to use an offset and stuff like that to move away from my Weber's at the time. And then finally I got, I found my rhythm. They say you find your barbecue groove eventually. And it kind of happened maybe like maybe a year and a half in, um, I started feeling that. And then the next thing I know, I get, I get a coat, I get a DM from some producer and they're like, Hey, we saw your page and we are filming a show it's going to be in texas uh would would we be able to talk to you uh can we skype you and so i'm like oh this is a scam like they're <laughs> they're always we're always like whatever dude let's go yeah. i mean next yeah i'm like nobody uses skype like yeah right <laughs> you know but i took it i took a screenshot of it and i sent it to one of my barbecue groups and one of the guys in there he goes erica that's real i worked with them on a show you need to call that lady back like immediately if it's not too late. So I'm like writing her back. I'm like, Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm interested. And so then I did a bunch of interviews and I was so excited. They had me cook a bunch and film it and everything like that. And at that point, um, they wrote me back one last time and they said, you need to cook us your five best dishes, your five best barbecue dishes and send us the pictures of them by tomorrow. So I drove over to my dad's house because he had um, he had a pellet grill that he had just bought. It was a pit boss. And I was like, I can't afford to mess up. And I'm not good enough with fire management to trust myself. So I was like, Dad, can I use it? Like, please, can I come over? And he was like, come over. And so we literally, we stayed outside and till the sun came up and I just cooked. And we alternated between like praying and me barbecuing and my dad just <laughs> encouraging me and he's like you can you do your best you do your best and i was like all right so the sun rose my dad finally went to bed i started photographing all the food i sent it in and then i never heard anything from them again for a whole did, year did you use filters on your food i didn't even know what filters were <laughs> when I, I couldn't understand why everybody on instagram had the most beautiful food well this guy right here bill purvis is the king a food filter. I'm surprised he didn't. He maybe did get that message and probably ignored it because this guy puts out some great Instagram. He is the uh, number one Instagrammer oh, uh, yeah. as far as as far as barbecue uh, food I pics. Need, I need to get lessons from him because I still can't take good pictures. I just I'm just kidding. I to I totally made that up. But if there were a number one Instagrammer food picker, that would be <laughs> Bill Purvis from Chicken Fried Barbecue. Uh, okay. Willie T's. Yeah. Always look at Bill's page. Yes, that's Chicken Fried Barbecue. He's, he's listening right now. He's uh, Willie T. Willie, uh, he, hello, met Erica at Memphis in May when I was there with Pit Maker. Yes. Uh, Ryan Cooper says she has the best stories. Oh, Ryan, that's my barbecue brother. There you go. Uh, no, this is great. This is this is so. It really just became. They found you on Instagram. That's really yeah, they cool. Slid into my DMs. <laughs> Yeah, so then I didn't hear anything for a year, but I was like, you know what? At least I had a chance. And it really motivated me, and I started going to more competitions. I brought my mom this time because I realized I did need help. Uh, mm -hmm. After my first competition, I after I packed up, I drove away, and I actually pulled off on the side of the road in Hazard, and I just slept in my truck because, I like, all that adrenaline, you know, everything, I just laid out in my truck on the side of the road, and I slept. And so I realized, like, I do need somebody. So my mom, I recruited her. She started coming. She's been my official runner ever since. <laughs> you you are now the most hardcore barbecuer that's ever been on the show right there. You know, one person.
person bringing everything under the sun and then just pulling over, probably dropping shit on the way out. Oh, and, of course. <laughs> and just crashing on the side of the road. That's that's a pretty cool story. All right. Okay. I just laid out. I was so exhausted. And I didn't want anybody in the competition to, like, see me all, like, messed up. So I was like, just go off somewhere and die in peace. Like, <laughs> Did you use all those yellow tickets as, like, a pillow to hold your head up a little? <laughs> That, that, big, up, that block big stack. Sun, block out the sun. I probably win that award for KCBS. I probably had the most yellow tickets of anybody ever in the history of KCBS. That's, that's, <laughs> hey, I doubt it. I doubt that is true. There's 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 been a lot of yellow a lot of yellows out there. Okay, so so let's fast forward. So they call you. I get, obviously they call you and say, Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. So then uh, after a year, right? It took that long. So I Crazy. must have been like really low on the totem pole and they're like, oh, yeah, nobody's available. Call, call that girl. Bill denied it. And everybody, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> call that girl. She's probably available. <laughs> She's always on Instagram. But yeah, so, so then they called and they were like, you're not on the show, but you're a finalist. So we're going to bring you down to Austin, Texas, and you'll figure out there if you're on the show or not. And so at this point, I'm like, wait, you're going to let me come down to Austin, Texas, give me a hotel room, a bed to myself, no toddler or dog. <laughs> Whatever happens, I'm down. Hell I'm yes. Down. Hell yeah. I was like, you don't even have to pick me. You're giving me a vacation. So uh, we ended up going down there and I met like some of the other people. But like as soon as I walked into the hotel, I, I was under the impression that it was like an amateur barbecue show. Uh, <laughs> and nope. then as soon as I walk into the hotel, I see Rodney Scott standing there. And I wow. was just like, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I was like, <laughs> I was like, please don't be a competitor. You know, I was like, I don't know. I was like, I should be here. So I immediately called my dad and I was like, dad, so the good news is I'm probably going to be home really soon. <laughs> <laughs> Cor Corby says Iron Woman barbecue. Oh, Corby. <laughs> But I'm like, Dad, I'm probably going to be home really soon. I've just seen uh, who's here. And, and I told him, I was like, I'm not, I don't want to embarrass the family, so I'm just going to go by my middle name. Uh, I don't want to <laughs> embarrass the family line or anything with what's about to go down. And so anyway, then um, the next thing I know, like, I'm in the shuttle van. They're like, you're on the show. And I was like, okay. And uh, the, I was on the shuttle van, and we're heading to the barbecue brawl set. And it's at a Star Hill Ranch. And I mean, it was a true, it's a real Western town. So I'm just like right. feeling it. I'm going through all the fields. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm like waiting to duel. I, I see tumbleweed going across. Like, I'm like, <laughs> this is so real. And what, so, uh, what time of the year was this? Um, so we got there in February and we filmed through February and March. So it was like so, good yeah. weather. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, and, it, and they had just had that frost, that snow. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we had like porta potties and stuff because the pipes weren't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You okay. Know? So I knew to I knew to not use the bathroom on set. I know exactly <laughs> the timeline now. Yes, we 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 suffered through all that, but y'all are probably laughing. Oh, well, Texas is. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Like, so. Show you. Do you got chains on your tires? Yeah. Just fine. But no. So then. Um, so then I. I don't know in my head i thought like oh there's gonna be like a slow warm-up to the show like you know we're gonna get to like talk and you know have a good time and then but no as soon as we walk out there like i see the food network clock the one you know that's counting down and i just remember how many times on my couch when i'm like in my underwear like <coughs> watching food network and i'm judging people and i'm seeing the clock and i'm talking crap and now i realize like that clock's coming for me like <laughs> it's so it, your clock yes it was a terrifying feeling and then i saw all the other pitmasters and you know i knew who they were i followed them on instagram i knew their histories and i just like kept being to myself like why are you here like you're the sacrificial lamb like this, <laughs> you should not be this here. Isn't, is that when you realize this is not an amateur competition this is not an amateur <laughs> i think i stepped on the wrong set i was i was like Whoa, i sold some wolf tickets that i can't cash i'm in so much trouble <laughs> But yeah, so then the next thing you know, like cameras come flying in. And I mean, I've never seen that many cameras in my life. And so that was its own set of fear because, you know, Instagram, it's you, you're in your house. And this was like, I mean, there was just technology I'd never seen before. And I knew that like every move I made was being recorded, every sound I made, every facial expression. 
so I was just like, oh my God, okay. And so then the next thing you know, they're like, get over here, get over here. We're turning on the clock. You're about to cook, you know, your first, your first meal on Food Network. And I was just, I don't remember the first episode because I think my soul left my body <laughs> from fear. <laughs> I had to watch it to see what I said and what I did. But at that moment, I knew like, okay, kick in your competitor side, do what you've done before and whatever happens, happens. So, so for those that, for those I, I should have backed up, but for those that don't know what we're talking about, like, why don't you tell them the show and how they can find it? If, if uh, does it, I'm sure it's re-airing, right? Yeah. How can, how can they find the show right now? Yeah. So it's Food Network's Barbecue Brawl. Um, they're actually going to start re-airing it pretty soon because the new season is going to be coming out. I think on May 9th, season three. But you can find it on Discovery Plus, Amazon, Hulu. I think it's everywhere. So. Oh, nice. Okay, so you can just go to Hulu or Discovery Plus and find it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, and uh, you mentioned Rodney Scott. You also had, um, oh, forgive me, what's the lady's name that was also a judge? We had um, Brooke Williams and we had Brooke Carson Williams Bradley. and Carson, yes. which I, I freaking love that dude, Carson. He's hilarious. <laughs> I've watched on, him on, I know. I have too on all the different shows and I was like, why is he on this show? But it <laughs> freaking worked. He was hilarious. I mean, That's just, fun. I was, I was laughing. Like just, some of the stuff he would say. Um, but yeah, oh, the so stuff that they never made it to the show was the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and you had your uh, your coaches, uh, Bobby Flay, Michael Simon, who is also I don't know, you probably know he's doing a barbecue show right now, yes, following comp cooks. Yep. Bill Purvis is one of the comp cooks that are on his show. So, um, yeah, reach out to reach out to Bill after this, and uh, yeah, he 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 told me his experience already, which is which is really neat. Uh, but you also had uh, Eddie Jackson, and you don't know this, but he has a bar. Did you go to his? Rose si uh, yeah, did you go to Rose Hill? He was in Utah at the time, so we couldn't we couldn't look uh, up. But I told him he owes me, and he's like, "All right." <laughs> Rose Hill uh, Beer Garden is uh, AKA my neighborhood bar. I live right down the road from it, and so I see Eddie all the time. He's a great dude. I love him, and and uh, he's just so nice, and he's always there. He's really cool. He's there, and and so uh, man. Why haven't I got him on the show? Actually, we talked about it. We did talk about it. We talked about it after this y'all season, but um, I'll wait till this next. Is he's on season three as well? I know. Yeah, he is. He yes, is. yeah. So maybe we'll we'll table that for season three. No, but he's a he's a he's a great he's a great guy as well. Now, was he? Didn't he want? Didn't wasn't he your coach at the end of this thing? No, he. I won an advantage challenge, and he got to assist me with my ribs. Okay. Who you and Bobby was your Bobby one, didn't he? Bobby, was you and Bobby, Bobby. Yeah. you and Bobby. Okay, yeah, he wasn't letting you go. I'm sure that was. <laughs> that. So, <laughs> so when did it was, it was touch or go in the beginning? Because I mean, I was just I was struggling. I was really struggling. <laughs> thank you, Jesse. It's a great times. First time watching Eric and Rob are keeping it interesting. Well, thank you. Join the Gooder Gang, Jesse. I appreciate that. So when did when was that moment? Where you're like, all right. I can compete here. Uh, was that uh, you know the first episode or what, you yeah. know I don't know. <laughs> no. Literally, if you watch the season up until I think episode five, I was more like a house plant. Like I was like <laughs> I was like prison rules. I said keep your eyes down, don't say much, just survive. Like I wasn't trying to do anything other than survive. And um, I remember at the time, like I I had to talk to myself. I would go back to the hotel. And I had I didn't even unpack because I knew at any moment I was gonna go. So I would just like pull out like a shirt to wear the next day. What? Like, not unpack because I didn't want to get comfortable. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so then finally like episode five, I was like, you know what? I <laughs> Must have been Brian Fox's chicken. That's another cook. This is now this is the smack we talk on this show right there. Uh, top fan Tony bringing it in. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> episode five. I'm sorry. I'm going to use that one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. So it was like episode five. I kind of like hit my low point for me where I was just like, you know what? Like, what are you doing? Like, you're here. There's so many people that want it to be here. And you're not valuing the experience because you're so stuck in your own head and your own fear. So at that point, I called my dad and I was just like telling him, I was like, you know, everybody's better than me. Like, you know, this is awful. And, you know, I'm just, I don't even, I doubt everything I do on the show. And my dad was just like, 
he's like, look, you're, he's like, first of all, you're fine. Stop being a drama queen. And he was just like, you're here for more than just yourself. He's like, the fact that you could even be standing where you're standing based on everything you've done in your life, you're here for a reason and you need to value that. And you really need to show out. He's like, because there's people that are in careers that they don't want to be in. They're in jobs they don't want to do. And they want to take a chance and they want to take a risk and go live their best life and do what their real passions are. And you're doing that right now. And you need to let that show. He's like, so don't cook scared anymore. He was like, do what you know you can do. And if you get eliminated, go out doing it your way. And after awesome. that, he was like, I was like, yeah, dad, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, he also said, don't you dare cry on uh, national television, which of course I did. But <laughs> <laughs> He basically uh, Batman slapped you over the phone and said, "Let's go, snap, snap out of it, let's go." And he was like, "Don't call me again until uh, the next elimination." I was like, "Okay." All right. So at this point, how many people are still left after this conversation? Um, at this point, I think there's nine of us left. So, so this... wait, no, no, no. There's there are there's six of there's seven. I think there's six or seven of us left at this point. Because half the people have been eliminated. So it was just like, uh-oh. And that was really hard, too, because you really make friends with the people you're with, especially your team. So at the eliminations, when, like, your teammate gets chopped and they're going away, you don't really ever get to say goodbye to them. So you knew, like, not only are you lo losing a teammate, but you're losing a friend that you just made who was in this journey with you and who had all the same dreams and hopes you did going into it. So, so it they're... They're just gone at that point? They're gone. They're On a plane them. and gone? They they leave, I think, the next day. Well, That's yeah, so what I remember happening. They're just gone. Bill so, asked a question, how long did it take? You said uh, about five weeks, I guess? Yeah, it was, yeah. it was about four or five weeks because we yeah. had quarantined first for a week. And then we started filming. And, like, you film and then you have interview days. Then you'll film again. You might have a dark day where you're free. Or you're just doing, like, back-to-back -back one or the other filming or interviewing. So it, it really kind of just like dragged out. Bill's just preparing for his show whenever he gets when he gets there. Uh, Brian Fox uh, is commenting back to Tony. You mean my brisket, Tony? And Tony says, "That's correct." She said, "Tumble weeds, plural, not just your chicken, Brian Fox. It's also the brisket." Uh, Stand up for yourself, Brian. Right, Brian. Brian is talking about this special backpack. I, what is this? I mean, yeah, this is tw twice now. What is this? So I bought an LED backpack where you control it with your cell phone and you can put any image you want on it. Yeah. And so I bought it for my son, but then I was like, wait a minute, I can use this for barbecue. So I took it. <laughs> it has a little battery pack on the inside and you can upload any pictures. You can do videos on it and everything. It's actually really cool. So. <laughs> okay, then. I like it. I like it. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think I'll take it to the airport yet because I don't know how TSA will... Yeah. I mean, it's a kid's backpack. I think you're safe. I think just don't put anything stupid inside of it, and you'll be okay. Although I did have to bring all my knives one time, and I was, like, trying to explain why I had, like, a murder roll with me, and I, they were, like, not buying it. And I was like, no, I promise you can Google me. I really do cook. Um, I, actually, I actually got a uh, pocket knife through Intercontinental Airport in, in – uh, I went to Omaha, Nebraska, and they found it. I had no idea I even had it on me, and they were like, what is this? I'm like, fuck, oh, shit, I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot about that. Deny, um, deny immediately. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, so let's let's get back to this. Uh, I want to I wanna talk about your win here. So that, so you're, you're at this point, you're, you're very confident, and yeah. your dad has hyped you up, and you're ready to go. Yeah, and, yeah. And, so I decided that I was like, I, I looked around, and I saw what everybody else was cooking. And, you know, everybody was cooking, like, pretty much, like, traditional, you know, Texas barbecue, competition barbecue. And I realized at that point, I said, I'm not going to be able to beat them at something that they've been doing way longer than I have. So I have to bring something to the table that I'm passionate about and that I can cook in my sleep. So I decided to start cooking things from my culture and from my heritage. And I was like, you know what? The rules just said barbecue. I can bring barbecue from, you know, my other cultures and I can display that here. And, you know, maybe it sends me home, but at least it's something that has meaning to me. So I started cooking tons of Cuban dishes, 
I started cooking stuff from New Orleans Creole Cajun dishes. I cook stuff from North Africa, Morocco. And I started doing that and I kept advancing. And I realized that, you know, I have something here. So yeah, I, really, I really focused on that. And I was cooking the things that I would cook at home or that I would cook for my family, my friends. And the next thing I know, we're at the final day and it's the it's the final elimination. And, and who, that, who, who was with you at that point in the finals? It was David from Beastcraft Barbecue in St. Louis. And it was Ara from Harlem Road in Richmond. Oh, yeah. My, our, our boy here, local local guy. Who Ara. is so funny. He's one of my best friends now. I'm, I go and I hang out with him all the time. But on the show, I was, like, terrified of him. Because he was, like, in full, like, you know, he had, like, the cowboy garb on. Cigar. Yeah, he had the cigar. And he was a man of very few words. And people were like, oh, he has a gun. like <laughs> In his boot. Get a gun in his boot. So I was just like, oh, let me not like get in his way, you know? And then he turns out like he's one of my best friends and I talked to him about everything I cook with him now. Uh, but it's just funny how the rumor mills happen on the show. Everybody's talking about each other. Um, so yeah, so then we got to we got to the final elimination. At that point, I was happy because I knew A, the show was about to be over. And B, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I made it to the end. Like, right. Like, you know, I mean, you, you probably, you probably, you said you're competitive. You probably, you're like, let's oh, go, let's bring it. Oh yeah. No, at that point I was definitely like, you know, I'm going to, this is my last meal I'm going to cook. Like, let's show out. And so I like, Bobby asked me, he was like, what do you want to cook? What do you want to do? And I was like, you know what? We're going to make this like a Cajun backyard barbecue. We're going to throw in some Caribbean stuff and we're just going to put it out there. And then I had saved making ribs because I wanted to make ribs for the show. But I knew like that was going to be like my Hail Mary. That was going to be the best thing that I would do. So I saved them for the ending and it just, it turned out amazing. And then we're eating, we're drinking, everybody's really relaxed and stuff like that. We're able to just like breathe. And um, I was like, I was trying to like look to see what the judges were talking about, if I could overhear them, but like they won't make eye contact with me. They're staying like sequestered. So I'm just like, oh God, what's going to happen? And then I realized that Carson was the one who announced it. And I knew from my previous eliminations, because I think I think I sat on the elimination chopping block more than anybody the entire season. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> so I was able to, like, analyze the judges and see what they their little tells that they do when they're about to eliminate somebody. And um, so Carson... When, whenever somebody was going to get um, eliminated or some big news was going to happen, he doesn't look at that person. He looks at everybody else. So we're sitting at the final table, and I realize he's not looking at me. And I'm like, oh, I was like, is it, is it possible? oh my God, this is happening. Like, <laughs> and then the next thing you know, he said my name. And at that moment, I just I stopped because I was like, Am I having like a psychotic break? Like has my anxiety and want and desire to win Trump so far that I just like in my head made up the fact that I won or did he really just say my name? And so that he had to say it a second time. And then, <laughs> and then at that point I was like, oh my gosh, you know, and it was just, it was great. And David and Aura and Bobby and Michael and Eddie, they were just so amazing about it. And I was just like, whoa i can't believe this really happens like what like on what planet does this happen that's amazing from just posting instagram pictures to coming in kind of with your tail between your legs and then getting that pep talk from your dad and then ultimately bringing it home that is a great story erica that is a, that's amazing yeah and and within a a lot of these guys watching have been doing this thing for a number of years and you're just like eh. I got a baby. Let's let's start posting pictures on Instagram. And I had like and, two followers. It was like my mom and my dog. Like, <laughs> and you didn't even you, you haven't even gone through the filter school, the Bill Purvis filter school yet. Uh, 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 when you do that, my goodness, you're gonna be on fire. But uh, yeah. that's that that is such an amazing story. And we're gonna we're gonna come back. We're gonna do a little sponsor spot again, and we're gonna come back because I want to talk to you about some competitions that you have done, some of the big ones that you've done. Yeah. And then you also are doing a video series here, uh, and you did that here in my hometown. So I'm going to come back to that. Y'all stick around, guys. We're, we're here. We appreciate you watching. Thanks for any new people that are watching. We appreciate that. Erica's bringing it, bringing it hot here. All right, let's get a sponsor spot, and uh, we'll come right back.
Shout out to our great sponsors, Rec Tech, Cosmos Q Products, Texas Pepper Jelly, Briscoe Ranch Cookoff at the Crossroads, LC Barbecue, Rick's RV Rental and Repair, Eureka Heights Brew Company, Chicken Fried Barbecue Grind. Jay Harding and Company, Texas Oil Dust, Bull Printing, Wraps and Graphics, and the Barbecue Store in Hempstead. Thank you for supporting the So Smoking Gooder Show. Hey everybody, Phil Breeden, owner and founder of LC Barbecue, and you're watching the So Smoking Gooder Show. Thank you, sponsors, and thank you to Phil Breeden with LC Barbecue, one of our sponsors. Have you ever heard of Phil Breeden, Erica? No, but now I'm what? Like, I was like, what? I to look it up. I've when seen you, his face before. So I'm when like, you move, <laughs> when you move to Houston uh, or Texas, anyway, you're going to learn all these people that are uh, watching right now because uh, Phil Breeden's a big name here in Texas. Bill Purvis, um, a lot of these guys that are. That are doing it. They do it all the time, and they're doing it well. I got to uh, where was that? Here it is, right here. Phil, for those that don't know, I got a treat for y'all. Phil Breeden is not only a uh, barbecue competitor; he is also a renowned singer. This is Phil Breeden right here at a contest we just had last weekend here in Cyprus. Uh, he can he can lay the pipes right there, and that my friend. <laughs> I'm kidding. Is not Phil Breeden, but he looks just like <laughs> Phil Breeden. That is Sundance Head, a uh, tremendous singer, a winner of The Voice. I think he was the winner of The Voice. But uh, let me pull <laughs> let me pull this back down before I get in trouble uh, from Phil. Yes, uh, that that was <laughs> laugh my ass off. Yes, Shell. She, I think Shell took that picture. Yes, uh, somebody says congratulations to Erica. Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shell also says, this is the lady I talked about in the beginning of the show that uh, we mentored and kicked ass. I'm so excited. I, I already wrote her name down because I was like, I need to know this woman. Yeah, and when you, when you when you get to town, uh, we'll, we'll get y'all hooked up because, uh, yeah, she killed it. In fact, when she was walking up for her third award, you know, there's four categories, uh, chicken, ribs, pork, and, uh, you know, you do, you do, you do the thing. Uh, when she was walking up, for her final, you know, brisket, she got a call, and, and the ladies that were in the house were like giving her the old "Hey," you know. So uh, it was a it was a cool deal. I was happy to, I was happy to say. So uh, Bill Purvis says you killed it in the finals. Yes, you did. Uh, okay, so that's that's gonna wrap up the whole uh, Food Network. So are you doing anything for Food Network after this? Or okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Can't talk about that. <laughs> Breaking news: There might be something, but <laughs> they but have the best contracts, and I'm an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you are an attorney, and uh, would you say some some way some some way? I don't hear. I don't drink. Say it again. Sommelier. Sommelier. <laughs> That's a wine. My dad, my dad still tells everybody, "Yeah, you know, my daughter's a Somalian," and I'm like, "Dad, it's a sommelier. Like, come on, I've showed you how to spell it. Say it." I have a few of those, but they're called, we call them winos. I mean, I don't know. Is it the same thing or Okay. It's pretty, pretty much the same thing. Okay. So we talked about the success from the show. Uh, has that allowed any other, you know, upcoming, you know, besides maybe what's coming up, but anything else? Uh, I mean, obviously you're on the best fake internet barbecue show on the planet right now. This one. Uh, but anything other than that type, I guess you're doing a lot of these now, maybe. Yes, it's been, it's been insane. And, uh, the, after you're on Food Network and especially if, you know, you advance to the final rounds of any show or you win, you get into this brotherhood. It's like the winner's circle. And then randomly people that have already won, people that have seen you, they start telling your name to other people. And the next thing you know, like opportunities start coming in and it's really up to you to go out there and really promote yourself and try to make sure that you capitalize on your time on TV. Absolutely. Because I mean, Food Network is like, we did our job. Like you, we did, we did this, you got this. 
So it's, it's really up to you to like build your brand and try to get exposure for as much as possible. And that was something like I realized right away. I was like, okay, now you will have a platform. Maybe it's only going to be for a few months afterwards. Who knows what's going to happen, but you will have a platform. What are you going to do with it? Um, and like the one thing about me, because I always, and I guess this is going to sound kind of weird, but like, I always knew my place, you know, I was like, I know that this amazing thing happened to me, but I'm never going to be one of those people where it goes to your head because I'm still learning barbecue. I haven't even been in it for five years. So there's no way that I'm going to walk around with this ego trying to act like I'm a better than anybody or that I know everything. You know what I mean? Like I always knew I was like, this is now your time to really learn, to understand and to promote other people. And so that was one of the things that when I walked away, I was so grateful for everything I experienced that I was like, how do I give back? How do I promote the barbecue community that really built me from nothing? You know, I, I, was, I was using a gas grill and I wasn't even good at that. And it was the barbecue community that like made me confident enough to go out there and actually start barbecuing. I'm going to say the right way. Yeah. <laughs> and so I wanted to give back. And so I knew I was like, how can I do that? And that's when the pit stop with Blue Smoke Blair was born. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to interview other people, other barbecue people, and really give them a platform to shine and to show what they're doing and to highlight their stories. Because like my dad said, you know, people, you never know what situation somebody's in, where they're at in their life. And it might be a story that they hear from somebody else that gives them that courage to take that leap. And yeah. I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to spend this year as a barbecue uh, ambassador. And hopefully beyond that, that's what I'm going to do. And that's why I started doing the pit stop. And it was just, I drove my RV down from Ohio. I went all the way down to Texas, over to Louisiana, came back up. And I just, I would email people. I would go slide in their DMs and just ask <laughs> them, like, if it's not an inconvenience, can I come can I come film you and can I hear your story? Are you okay with it? I'm going to put it on my Instagram. Is that something you would you know, be willing to hear and let me do? And the response was just amazing. People were like, you want to come in the pits and see what we do and talk to us? Like, we'll do it. We're here for you. And I was just right. like, again, the barbecue community. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Your, your, uh, your attitude, your humbleness comes through because I was very excited. I hadn't met you. I didn't, this is our first time to meet. And I had never met you, but I was excited about this conversation. I knew that it was going to go well just by watching your videos. And, and, and they are very insightful. They're fun. I mean, you're, you have this personality where it's like you just want to watch. And for those that don't know, we're talking about your video series that you have on. And where can they find that? And tell them, tell us, you were just here in Houston. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, you know, I wore this shirt just for you. These are these are my boys here, uh, Louis, Louis, Leo. I'm sorry. Uh, I, love him. I love him. I love them. They're they're great, and they put out some tremendous, like the top barbecue in this okay. in this area right now. He's so I gained a lot of weight. I like stayed at Truth, <laughs> just eating. So they can find that on YouTube. Yes, just Blue Smoke Blair is my YouTube channel, yep. and we post one every single month. And we have some old ones up there from the first season. Now, I will let you know, the first season, it was not a production. It was me and my camera phone. So <laughs> the second season, On3 Media partnered with me and actually started filming. And then the smoke sheet helped get it out to tons of their viewers, their readers, and everything like that. And then the second <clears throat> season, all of us came down together. And we went to a bunch of barbecue restaurants together and just, you know, had a ball. Yeah, I saw. I've seen a couple. I think you only released three. I think at this point yeah. from season two, um, but you visited how many uh, Houston area barbecue joints did you hit? I think in total we did like seventeen. Oh my gosh! <laughs> See, I'm jealous. I've only done a few of these, and I live here. So, but some of the ones that uh, I'm going to be watching, uh, I've been to Tejas. Love Scott and all those guys. Yeah, spend all day there. Like, yeah, that, the, the chocolate uh, stuff you just posted was very interesting. Uh, but I, I also obviously real chocolate bean. Like, I hadn't either. It's a pretty big damn bean. Uh, looks like a, you can, it looks like an instrument, right? Oh, I, know, I, I, should, like, I shouldn't have done that with the people who watch this show. But uh, yeah, no, it's 
<laughs> it's it's uh yeah i was i was excited or i was interested and i learned a lot watching that one um uh, i know you're i've seen just in some of the promos you've been a j a jm i think it was and you mm -hmm. also went to uh blood brothers now yes. i want to talk about that that is a different style i haven't been there yet i haven't been there i'm sure you're going to recommend me going go, there because everybody go is on thursday night when they do like their chef's trial kitchen menu okay and they're basically like trying out new recipes Thursday night was insane. It and I was with On Three Media, and it got to the point where I was like, "Get out from behind the camera because you need to eat this." And so we just full on started eating. It was insane, and I have never, I have never had fusion like that. So tell me, kind of what to expect? Barbecue blood brothers. If you don't know, you can. Is it no? It's Blood Brothers Barbecue. I'm sorry, Blood Brothers Barbecue. Um, you can look them up. They're in the Houston area, but what type of, uh, what is fusion, what is Asian barbecue, how does that meld? It was, it was crazy because they brought in, they brought in like Cajun influences and then they would have different chilies, like Asian chilies mixed in with Cajun food. They had like these gumbo brisket balls. It was insane. And wow. I'm just, I'm just like looking and I was like, whoa, this I was like, I, I don't even know what to do with this because first of all, it was art. The way it came out and was presented, it was art. And then the flavor was so elevated. And even though it was so much food and they had fried dishes as well, the way that they do their sauces, their seasoning and their spices, they have like a very good acid base. So everything was like off your palate fast and you didn't get that heavy feeling at all. And then they had just the right amount of spice. So that's great. Just, you ate it where you're just like, oh, am I about to be in trouble? And then it was gone. And you're just like, how do you do that? <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Cooper still watching. He says, so much barbecue in Houston. 17 <laughs> spots. Uh, Shell Shell said she'd love to meet you next time you Please. are in the area. Uh, yes. So that that that's great. Uh, so you can find that on, is it on, only on YouTube at the moment? It's on YouTube right now, Blue Smoke Blair. And then... I will kind of put oh. this out there. It's been picked up. Wait, hold up, hold up. Breaking news, everybody. Breaking news. Go ahead. <laughs> it's been picked up for a Chef's Network on streaming that will be coming out at the end of the year. But I'm allowed to release them now for everybody to see. And then it's going to be taken over to that platform. So. Nice. That's exciting. That's exciting. That's really cool. That is really cool. Okay, so I, I do want to circle back, and this will be the last thing, because we, we've been at it for an hour, and I appreciate you coming on the show. This has been a, a real joy for for me. Uh, okay, so we'll go back to the competition. I know you, I've seen you had a video when you were, you did actually, you wound up at Memphis in May, right? Yes. And then you were you were also recently at Hogs for the Cause over with yes. my buddy James Cruz, and uh, Joey Machado was there. I don't know if you know yes. Joey. You met, yes. Yeah, Joey, Joey's a great <laughs> A great guy. We were just over at Rose Hill last weekend. Um, he did a uh, demonstration. He's got a new charcoal line coming out yep. and some and some new pits. So we were over there, and he was throwing it down. And Eddie was there. Have you tried his charcoal yet? Oh yeah, I used it last weekend. I, I, I'm I'm going to uh, burn it again this weekend. No, it is. It's, it's amazing good. and it's clean. I was very impressed. It is, <laughs> and uh, it's not out for the public yet. Look at us. <laughs> Get yourself on the wait list insiders here you and you and i erica look at that yes no but it is a great product guys and you can find that very soon i think he mentioned um here in mid june or something that you'll be able to to get texas original charcoal company charcoal from joey so your experience at memphis in may that is a totally kind of different experience you know they only they really focus on the pork all the the beef and the chicken and the poultry and the turkey and all that is all ancillary yeah uh, talk talk about that experience and uh then you can skip over to hogs for the cause that's another completely an different animal over there uh, but yes <laughs> literally literally i know you have a little hog experience taking myron's class but uh you got to put that you got to put that to use there didn't you it was funny because in myron's class i was so new i didn't even know what i was looking at <laughs> I'm like, okay, wh where where are the ribs? Where where, <laughs> where they're where? there? Yeah, we don't do we don't here in Texas we don't do a lot of whole hog either. Yeah, um, well, Figes, I know. Figes, Aaron, Aaron and Patrick Figes, they're bringing a lot of whole hog now. Leo is doing it as well. Yes. It's it's they're they're bringing it and they uh, and I saw that from your video. He's trying to stay true to you know like what Rodney Scott does over in 
Yeah. Is it North Carolina or South Carolina? I think it's South Carolina. Yeah, well, now uh, he's all the way up to Nashville. No, oh, look at him. Rodney Good for him. Got Nashville, too, and uh, Atlanta. He's He is just a success story. One of the cool things that happened on um, Barbecue Brawl is we won a challenge, and Rodney started our fire for us, and he used bacon fat to start the fire. And so we were all like, yeah, this is so cool. And so I waited until the end of the night when the fire finally died down and it was just embers and I stamped one out and I kept it. I took it from the fire. And <laughs> yeah, exactly, Will. <laughs> and so I took one of the embers from the fire and I was like, if I get eliminated or when I get eliminated, I'm going to show Rodney this ember that I'm keeping because I really felt like it symbolized, you know, my journey and his journey as well because I watched him on his Netflix show. Very and cool. I yeah. never thought in a million years I'd be in his presence or that he'd be trying my food. So I kept that ember. I still have it. And I was just like, this is the ember of what perseverance, dogged determination, and belief in yourself and not taking no will do for you. And so I keep it to this day. And whenever, you know, things get a little sketchy or iffy for me and I don't know what's about to happen, I look at that ember and I'm like, you got this, girl. Whatever's going to happen, you got this. But yeah, so Memphis and May... It was amazing. Um, it was smaller scale, the one that I did, because it was very limited on how many people they accepted. Right, they had to come um, all. Oh, I, I shouldn't have said that. I just got banned. <laughs> Sorry. But Sorry. yeah, so I, um, I drove down, and then I ended up having to drop my husband off at the airport. So when it was time to load in, I was by myself. And I had my once again, car. once again, was. <laughs> and so I kept driving in and it wasn't well marked and I couldn't find my spot. So I circled around and I kept like having to do like the drive of shame in front of the same security guard because like, I couldn't find my spot. And so then finally, uh, my friend Anmar from Robinson Smokehouse, I like texted him and I'm like, please come rescue me. And he was like, you know, you have to reverse all the way down the street. It's on a sidewalk to get to your thing. And so I looked back and I saw all the other people's like expensive stuff. And I was like, I can't, I can't reverse. I, I can't do this. Like I'm going to owe millions of dollars if I reverse down the sidewalk. So, so once again, barbecue love, he and his team came and they backed me into my site and it helped me unload and everything. Um, but one of the really important things is like, there's a lot of rules with Memphis and May. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the fire chiefs came over and everybody's inspecting everything and you have to be on your A game because you can get just like really quick or have a problem. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, oh my God, I was like, this is really intense. And then um, once we got started, you know, I did the ancillaries and it was, it was really good to be able to do that to kind of see. And some of the veteran guys, they were like, hey, this is, this is what you need to do here, you know, if you want to make sure that you succeed. So I was with my friend from the show, Taylor. She was mm -hmm. my co-chef at this one. And so we really, we just went, we went all in and we did everything we could. The very intimidating thing is like the judges, they come on site. Yeah, on site judging. You, and so I, I saw that everybody else, I saw like a video or something where you're supposed to like split the ribs in front of them and present it. So I'm sitting there like, oh, this is going to have failure. So I'm sitting there like, I feel like I have a telephone book. You know, I'm like Hulk Hogan in these ribs to like show them how great they are. Uh, Did they split? Did they go good? All right. Good, 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 good. good. Those are kind of the little things that you don't learn until you're actually there. Um, so I was like, okay, there's a lot of things to learn. We ended up getting perfect scores at the on-site judging. So I was like, I couldn't believe it. There was a little incident where... Uh, something happened with the judging and it got mixed up. So a judge came, we did the full run through on this judge. And then they were like, Oh no, that judge wasn't supposed to come to your site. And we had given like our best, our, our best oh. to that judge. And we're like, no, count his score, please count his score. Um, so then there was like a two hour lull where everybody had to wait. So, you know, we're trying to like keep our stuff moist, saran yep. wrap and everything really tight and then resaucing quickly as soon as we saw them coming and everything like that. But it was a really fun experience and it was a lot of teamwork. So I loved that. And then our ancillaries, I did I did brisket and I was like, oh, it's an ancillary, whatever. You know, I did what I do. And then we ended up getting 33rd on that and I wasn't expecting that. And I was like, whoa, like this is great. And um, I didn't party or anything like that because I was kind of stressed out. But <laughs> this year I'm gonna party. 
<laughs> that's some of the you know besides Houston that is some of the good the best party and it's just it's a oh, cool different fun. it's a great atmosphere it's right on the river it's so much fun I've done I went there one time with Joey and uh, <laughs> we were with the team and yeah they did ribs as well and this kid was phenomenal with that on site with that yeah. on site so and then let's just and then just, the other thing is it's networking people don't realize Memphis and May is a lot of networking like so make sure you have whatever you want to pass out make sure you have stuff to be remembered by if there's like people you want to see and i didn't realize it was like that much networking so this year i'm going to make sure that i go around and talk to a lot more people but even the limited people i did talk to they ended up turning into really good barbecue friends so i was like wow. i was like this is great very nice <laughs> very it. nice it's very and expensive it I, is. Think, I think last year because it was my first year and i had to get everything I think our total came up to a little under 17,000 oh, wow. to get everything done. So I think this year, I'm, I think we're at 11,000 right now, but I just wanted, I didn't know like to have sponsors help out and stuff like that. So Absolutely. This year, we got sponsors. <laughs> did you, did you build, did you build Bobby Flay? I should have. I'm like, oh, here we go. In hogs for the cause. And uh, real quick, how, how is Bobby? Was Bobby uh, intimidating to, okay, no. good. He's yeah. not. He's just, he's, he's an introvert and he's very, and ridiculous. you're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> My parents were like, we don't know how you didn't get kidnapped. Like, <laughs> but, but no, he's, he's, uh, he's very reserved. So, the you know, the drive, of shame. <laughs> the drive of shame, girl. It was so bad. I did like 10 <laughs> passes. I had, I had no, I had no dignity left by the last time I came through. I was like sweating. But <laughs> so t t hogs for the cause. I've never done that. I know that it's a different kind of animal, and it's just like we talked about. It literally is. But uh, what is that? It's it, it's a, it's mainly a public yes. voting, yes. right? It's it's yeah. what they they come and they vote on, which I think is cool. It's they not so judge. much a cop. Yeah, there's like two there's like two separate tiers of judging, like the public vote for best and everything like that. They also do that at Memphis in May. Um, if you sign up for that part where it's like best barbecue in town, it'll be the public will vote for you. Um, but Hogs for the Cause was really cool because it's helping fight and offset the cost of pediatric brain cancer in New Orleans. So just by the fact that you're there, you're a winner because you're changing lives, you're helping families. So you're happy to be there. Because you, know, you know it's about something bigger than you. Right. And you're helping families and you're also getting to feed tons of people. But I mean, it was just, it was top notch. And James's team was huge. I mean, there was like 40 people in that tent at any given time. And he's a real world champion from last year, Memphis in May. So we were oh, like, no pressure. You talking about, oh my gosh. Yeah, he, they party. I, I was in his tent the year. No, he didn't win that. He was third that year. Uh, but yeah, that that tent was hopping, and I'm sure it's, that was at Memphis in May. I don't know how it was at Hogs for the Cause. I'm sure it was just it was, as it was litty. Awesome. It right. was insanely awesome, and so many people come by, and you know, you see so many people now that you've met before, and they're out there, and you know, it's New Orleans, so there's just like a different laid back kind of vibe where everybody's just like ready to pop off and party. Were you drinking then? <laughs> no, I didn't. It was too hot. <laughs> yeah. That's and, and it's always wet there too. I mean, it's it was just, too hot. I was like, yes. if I drink, I'm gonna like pass out, and my car is like a mile away. I was like, we're not doing this. <laughs> Beautiful. I don't want to keep you too long. This has been such a great time. I, I, I'm glad you did it. And I knew, I knew, like I said, I knew it was gonna be great, and, I'm, and it lived up to what I thought it would be. But I hope you enjoyed your time here on the So Smoking Gooder Show. And when you come back, we have our contact information. I would love for you to reach out and uh, and uh, maybe we go on a Thursday night to the Blood Brothers barbecue. That would be I cool. I want to take you. I yes. To take you. I will hold off <laughs> on that. I mean, I've been holding off for about six years now. I know they've been open for a while. But uh, yeah, I can, I, can, I can hold out a little longer. But when you get back, yes, I would love for you to reach out because uh, that would be fun. <laughs> that would be an absolute joy. Uh, you've been an absolute joy. I appreciate you coming on the show so much. Uh, before I let you go, anybody you want to give a special shout out to before we uh, get you out of here? <laughs> um, actually, I just want to tell anybody who's listening, invest in yourself, believe in yourself, follow your heart, follow your dreams. That voice that's inside of you that's telling you things, that's your guide. And don't let anybody else's opinion or thoughts or beliefs influence your greatness. 
there is so many amazing things that you can do and your passion will take you to places that you have never thought you'd be able to go. So smoke on and just continue being amazing. That was the best way to end our interview with Erica Blair of Blue Smoke Blair. Season two's winner of Food Network's Barbecue Brawl, Master of Q. Thank you, Erica. And uh, let's get in touch when you get back in. When you get to Houston, I'm excited that you're going to be a fellow Houstonian. <laughs> Uh, Lee Orton says, I love how happy she is. Great show. Yeah, and it comes across on her show. So y'all check her out on Instagram and on YouTube, Blue Smoke Blair. All right. Thank you, Erica. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. There she was, Erica Blair of Blue Smoke Blair. That was awesome. I knew that it was going to be great. And she lived up. She lived up to the hot. Yeah, best advice ever. She's a sweetheart. She's a sweetheart. And it comes across on her videos. You guys check her out. You know, stop with, no, don't stop yet. When I'm done, stop and then go check out her videos because they are great. And she's going to be releasing them, you know, I guess weekly. Uh, she's gonna, she went through, like y'all sell, 17 different spots here in Texas or in Houston. So that's going to be good. All right, y'all stick around because we do have the Bullprinting Wraps and Graphics Wrap-Up Recap, which a lot of y'all may hear your name. And then uh, we got the Briscoe Ranch. Up at the Crossroads upcoming event segment. And then next week, guys, I already lined up Arnie Dex. Yes, Arnie Segovia is going to come on the show next week. So one more sponsor spot will be our last one of the night. Then we'll do the case video because I know y'all all love the case video. And then we'll do the bull printing wraps and graphics wrap-up recap and the Briscoe Ranch cook-off at the Crossroads upcoming event segment. And then we'll get out of here. Shout out to our great sponsors, Rec Tech, Cosmos Q Products, Texas Pepper Jelly, Briscoe Ranch Cookoff at the Crossroads, LC Barbecue, Rick's RV Rental and Repair, Eureka Heights Brew Company, Chicken Fried Barbecue Grind. Jay Harding and Company, Texas Oil Dust, Bull Printing, Wraps and Graphics, and the Barbecue Store in Hempstead. Thank you for supporting the So Smoking Gooder Show. <laughs> One more time. Yes, I know y'all love that just like I do. It's never not funny. It's always funny to me. Yes, uh, thank you, Bill Purvis. Great show, Robbie. Eric is probably going to be reaching out for that uh, filter class, Bill. I would uh, definitely keep your phone on standby for that. Kevin Hernandez, thank you so much. Awesome show. Uh, it never. <laughs> you're right, Corby. It never gets old. Ryan Cooper, thank you very much. Great show. I'm going to tune in all the time. Welcome to the hashtag... Gooder Gang, you're going to be getting a shirt here soon. Speaking of that, we are having our five-year anniversary, and uh, I have to reach out to Eddie Jackson, who we just talked about at Rose Hill Beer Garden. But I think that's where we're going to have it. It's going to be uh, it's going to be sometime in uh, mid July. Hopefully, you guys aren't cooking because no one wants to cook in this damn heat in mid July. So we're going to have our five-year anniversary. Our five-year anniversary be it officially is seven seven of uh, 22. We started at 7-7 of 17 with our first guest was Wade Whitlow. That's a name. That's a blast from the past. All right, guys, let's get to the uh, Bull Printing Wraps and Graphics wrap-up recap sponsored by our good friends over at Bull Printing. Let me uh, get Erica's banner off of here. Uh, she was great. Thank you, Miss Erica. Uh, BPOA Scholarship Fund Grand Champion Reyes Sepul Sepulveda. I know I'm saying that right. Texas Sweet Heat RGC was Emmanuel Bazan or Bazan from Lonely Boys. These guys, these names are uh, Parker County Sheriff's Posse Grand Champion Lane Holmes from HB Barbecue. RGC Kevin Caldwell, he was in the comments earlier. I hope he's still here from Holy Smoked 
Cookers, congratulations. We also have the Texas Association of First Responders. That's where I was this weekend. That's where Shell killed it. But she didn't win it. Grand champion was Fong Vong, Extreme Texas Cookers. And the RGC was our guest from two weeks ago, Danny Regan from Hell Yeah Barbecue. He also won the most unique or most beautiful pit out there. His trailer is, in fact, beautiful. Congratulations on that as well. Wild West, Wild Wild West Fest the grand champion was Fred Robles, Rio Valley Meats, the RGC, Jeremy Cortez from Smokin' OCD. And the last one in the Champions Barbecue Alliance from last weekend was McSnarb, Acres Barbecue Bash. The grand champion was Aaron Leslie, our good friend from Texas Old Dust. And the RGC, man, this guy was busy, Fred Robles from Rio Valley Meats. And over in the IBCA, Marina Village Camp and Cook, grand champion, Jamie Roby. Congratulations from Texas Smoke. The RGC was Corbin Stone, Smoking Donkeys. In the BCJLS Barbecue Grand Champion, Carlos Enriquez from Los Milagros Q Crew. The RGC was Chris Davis from Cross Rifles Barbecue. And in that, Chris Davis, you get one of these. I'm Chris Davis with Cross Rifles Barbecue, and you're watching the So Smoking Gooder Show. Yes, you are. Congratulations, Chris Davis in the Buda County. It says country. I think it should be County Fair and Wiener Dog Races. That would have been fun to watch. We should all have some Wiener Dog Races going on. Grand Champion was James Brooks from Boss Barbecue. RGC, Romero Gonzalez, Gordo Q. He's also Team Tito's number five. And then the Kennedy Blue Bonnet Days, Grand Champion Eddie Morales from the Pit Father Barbecue. I'm Eddie Morales from Pit Father Barbecue. You're watching the So Smoking Gooder Show. Yes, you are, Eddie Morales. The RGC was Dwayne Garber from Miss Mid Coast Cookers, and this was a uh, a double. So I think uh, was it Saturday was IBCA McSnarb Acres Barbecue Bash, and Sunday was CBA. I would love to see more of those collaborations. Are they called collabs? Collabs, or you know where they do both of those. I know we've got a couple of uh, KCBS and maybe a CBA. Now we have an IBCA and CBA. I'd love to see more of those. Let's go. Let's unite. Let's all unite. Grand champion was Merrick Hager, Smoking Raiders. The RGC was Alan Smithhart from SBK Barbecue. And IBCA had a shit ton of contests last weekend. Is it Papalote or Papalote? Volunteer Fire Department. Grand champion was Ray Chacon from Lago Smokers. The RGC was Michael Gibson Jr., from repeat, repeat offenders barbecue, and the sergeant in Sergeant Texas, Sergeant Volunteer Fire Department, Grand Champion, my good buddy Lance Vincent and Matt Carr from Just One More Cookers. Congratulations, boys! RGC was Greg Hibner or Hibner, sorry, Shiner Smokers, and lastly, Smoke on the Water, Grand Champion Alan Ayers, Compassion's Fire Bar Fire and Smoke, excuse me. And the RGC was Enrique Munoz from Not To Worry Barbecue. Congratulations, everyone. They got their name called on the Bull Printing Wraps and Graphics Wrap-Up Recap. If you guys need banners, signs, decals, uh, wraps, that's amazing. I've got my, if y'all seen my Bull Printing, my Bull Printing, my Bullhorn trailer, that wrap, especially the one that says Bullhorn Tailgaters, has been on for 10 years years ladies and gentlemen and it looks amazing to this day so shout out to the people over at bull printing wraps and graphics mary and cheeto mesquise will hook you up just contact them you can find them on facebook you can find them on the interwebs or you can reach out to me and i will get you in contact all right on to the briscoe ranch cook-off at the crossroads upcoming events segment that's gonna be held december 8th and 9th i'm sorry 9th and 10th excuse me 2022 in uvalde Texas in the Champions Barbecue Alliance. This weekend we have the Waller County Demolition Derby in Hempstead, Texas. We have the Willacy County Young Farmers Cook-Off in Raymondville, Texas. We got one in Lamp Passes. That is where I will be this weekend. LTX Barbecue and Rodeo. Love doing those rodeo cook-offs. Maybe they'll put my boys back to work. 
uh, and, and new brothels as well. Cooking up for a cure. This is always a great contest. Uh, guys, there's lots going on this weekend in the Champions Barbecue Alliance. Next weekend, lots stock and barrows. Ag Youth Barbecue Contest in Hondo, Texas. All right, over in the IBCA. Excuse me. Worst case when you need them. Han Solo this weekend. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Still a maze. I don't know what uh, that means. Sorry, Wes. Great show as usual. Did Kay say what that post <laughs> tasted like? No, but he hit it hard. All right, sorry. Over in the IBCA. This weekend, we got the Freestone County Go Texan in Fairfield, Texas. We got Bob Wills Day in Turkey, Texas. We got fans of American National Music Fest over here in Tomball, Texas. We got the Fort Worth Stock Show Syndicate in Fort Worth, Texas. And we got Hogs at the Point in Channing, Texas. Okay, is that it? That is it. All right, that's going to wrap up the Briscoe Ranch Cookoff at the Crossroads upcoming event segment, December 9th and 10th, 2022, in Uvalde, Texas, at the Uvalde County Fair Fairplex. That is uh, Wade Carpenter and crew. Y'all all know. We talk about it all the time. They do an amazing job. They have amazing facilities. If you guys don't have that on the calendar, it is an awesome cook, and they have some of the best uh, awards in the business. They feed you on Friday. They feed you on Saturday. We have a great time. It's just an amazing cook-off, so y'all make sure you put that on your calendars. And that is going to wrap up. Whoa, how we room? There we go. That's going to wrap up the bull printing wraps and graphics wrap-up recap and the Briscoe Ranch cook-off cross at the Crossroads upcoming event segment. Sorry. All right. Lastly, last order of business. Next weekend, we're going to have Arnie Tex. Arnie Segovia, he's going to come on the show He's got lots going on right now. He has started one of these type shows, which I want to talk to him about that. He's also got some new rubs and uh, seasonings coming out, or they're already out. And we'll just touch base with Arnie. He hasn't been on the show in a while. Oh, re damn it. Yes, I need to get that on video, Wes. You are absolutely right. I, need to, I do need to get that on video. All right, guys, we are an hour and a half in, and I can't thank you enough for watching our show. It means a lot to me. I appreciate you guys very much, and we'll be back next Wednesday. You know where to be, right here, 8 o'clock on Wednesday, watching the very best fake internet barbecue show on the planet. We'll see you. What's up, Daniel? A little late to the party, but thank you very much for coming in. Uh, Mike Reyes, thank you so much. Yes, I will get that on video, Wes. That's better than the pole eating, for sure. Shell Leach, congratulations again. You can go back and watch. I gave you some proper props er, earlier in the show. Yes, love Arnie. He's going to be great as well. And uh, all right, guys, that's going to wrap up the show. Thank you so much. I got, oh, hold on. I got new toys here. Let's do that. Let's get some walkout music. There we go. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. It means a lot. You guys are checking us out on Facebook, on YouTube, or on Twitch. I have a feeling next week we'll have a bigger crowd on Twitch because I'm going to do something about that. So thanks for watching the show, guys. We'll see you next week, next Wednesday at 8 o'clock right here. And as Case always says, good night, Barbecue Nation, and you too, California. We're out. <laughs>